All right. Welcome to our awesome chat with the Frontline Feeders Philippines. And uh, I think I've heard this group from Rich. Uh, and at the start... Uh, and um, I've, uh, I've heard about uh, this group from Rich uh, when everything started. And so we were inspired by their story. And now they're here. We're having, uh, we'll be having, uh, having our awesome chat with them this morning. All right. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Thank, thank you for coming. All right. Um, so, first things first. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So we'll start with who? Who do we start with? So first things first. Um, we really wanted to know how did you guys get started? Diba parang they remember a lot of people were afraid of COVID-19 and then there's an impending lockdown and then here you guys organizing to feed the frontline. So who can start off with your story? How did you get organized um, and tackle the initial challenges of your operations? May? Maybe? Um, Can you start? To me. Oh, me. Or Carla. Or Carla. Who, who was it? Okay. <laughs> no, um, initially, like, it wasn't supposed to be, like, a relief effort. It was more of one of our team members, because he, Candy, Candy Bernardo. She was celebrating her birthday um, on March 12th. And what she wanted to do was instead na magpaka party siya or whatever, sabi niya, gusto daw niya magpakain ng frontliners. So she got in touch with Gang, um, Gang of Rocket, uh, and um, yun na, parang from there, nag-connect-connect connect na with different people. So they got um, Doc Gia season involved, and then Ross involved, um, Ross one of Commune Cafe. And then, um, yun, Ross got me involved kasi parang uh, they were going to feed 400 frontliners in Makati Med. So parang they were trying to tap like the, the restaurants and the kitchens that had like huge facilities because we were talking about, you know, 400 for lunch and maybe another 400 for dinner, right? So like, wala lang. Wala pa yung ECQ announcement nito and everything that um, when it all started. Um, and when ECQ was announced that um, there was going to be a lockdown and whatever, we realized that there was going to be a bigger need for food mm-hmm. to be brought to the frontliners in different hot, just Makati Med. Um, mm-hmm. Yun, because one of, uh, parang they wouldn't have access to food beyond, let's say, 8 o'clock because the curfew was at 8, right? Uh, so, wala na. We weren't sure if there were going to be delivery um, systems in place. So, so yun. So, parang from there, uh, we received different, uh, when, when we started feeding our people, we're, we're asking us for help na parang kailangan din namin ng food in this hospital in this hospital and yun from from helping hospital we ended up helping like serving food to like seven hospitals overnight parang parang it, it just it happened so quickly eh because of the the ECQ thing that happened over the weekend um yun anything else so, oh hi Ross <laughs> So, paano kayo nag-get uh, together? I, I think, uh, maybe let's in, let's do an introduction of the entire yes. team, siguro. Okay. Uh, Honestly, I haven't met like 90% of the entire group. Kasi, <laughs> um, yeah, yung, the one who brought me in was, ano eh, was Ross. And then I brought in Koyen, and Koyen brought in Steffi. So, parang like, it was ganun, parang... Hatak na lang ng hatak ng kung sino may kakilala who wa- wanted to help or who already was helping. So just so we could organize ourselves. Uh, yun. I think Ross can give a better background story to this. Yeah. No, I think you covered it. Um, hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, hi, Ross. Hi, Ross. Um, I think Carla had the, has the whole very short history covered. But in terms of how people got together, um, Everyone's from different backgrounds. Um, we are all connected somehow, pero you know, some people we have not met in person. Uh, in this group, 
I know Carla and Margot. <laughs> I know Lucien. I know Jen, but then Koyen and Steffi and I have never really met before. Um, so it was really us pulling people in. And I think it's making the judgment call of who can possibly fit this kind of dynamic. Because it's... <laughs> one of my friends called it a... Uh, uh, parang organized chaos. <laughs> system one system of um somehow we make it work we we're all bound together by facebook messenger that's our main uh project management app <laughs> um Yay, ross you're here and um i think one of the main considerations when we pull people in one you um medyo oc mahilig mag organize and two multitasker doesn't mind multiple um, chat groups <laughs> running all at the same time. And yun, yung may puso to help. So like, um, Doc G, Gang, Chell, and I have been actually in the relief and rescue for DRRM stuff ever since. Pag may bagyo, pag may something, ganyan. So, it's not super new. It's new because this one is a whole different um, operation operation altogether because it's very um it's very long it's much longer than any of the relief efforts and well a pandemic is a very new territory to us so what were the initial challenges i know it was really hard eh, at the start talaga even before the, the ECQ started so can you share us some stories how uh, the different challenges you encountered and uh, And how, how, how did you guys overcome it? Big challenges. <laughs> Ross, since you're, you've been there from day one, you're the, the, the best. Oh. Day, day two na ako eh. Day one si Ross eh. Challenges. Um, to be honest, at the start, hindi pa siya ganun kahirap because we were handling only a handful, like literally a handful of hospitals. Um, and then, you know, we were treating it as like any other donation drive that the whole Philippines is used to. When something happens, you ask for donations, there are always people who are eager to help. I think the challenge came, siguro mga week two, um, when more hospitals started needing help. So I think by week two, we were already at about 40 hospitals by week two. Um there were more hospitals that needed to be served. We were running out of sources for food only because access is so difficult. Um, even going to the grocery for the kitchens was difficult because they were limiting the supply. Uh, and of course, we the taper off the donations eh, at a certain point, right? That's why whenever we're invited to like, can you tell us the story of Frontline Feeders Game? Because anytime we're featured in any form, magkakaroon yun ang spike in donations. And today is timely because operations are extended once more. So, so, so those are the challenges. It's really sustaining it. Um, I think by the second week when those challenges came in the mind, the core group was already pretty established. So in terms of the backbone of the operations, we were, we were already there. It was a matter of being able to adapt to the situation. Yes. Um, extent, the blocking trucks namin. Um, some kitchens are no longer operational, so we have to find other kitchens. Um, and then it was being creative in terms of donations. Of course, at the start, cash was the easiest, right? Then we just buy it. Um, but now it also comes in kind, which is super helpful, but it's another challenge altogether to get all the stock um example five tons of vegetables in one day so how do you distribute all that vegetables before it goes bad and have these kitchen serve it to the to the restaurant so, no, so the challenges really change every day so, there's also um ross mentioned um creativity and donating during the second week there were also people who started donating actual meals to very, very specific locations. 
And it snowballed to having people donate notes, uh, like encouraging notes that they'd like to give to the frontliners, you know, attaching them to, to the meals that we give them. So it's another way of being a, a supporter, not exactly the kind of support we thought of because we were thinking of food, uh, but these um, notes that were given to the frontliners along with the meals actually um, helped. Yeah. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so I'm really amazed at, uh, at the story of Frontline Feeders Philippines. Maybe can we go around the table and uh, what are, can you just uh, share your background? What motivated you to join this and uh, any stories you could share? Um, during your operation, maybe we can start with Karenina. Karenina, <laughs> talaga. Karenina. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think see, well, I did a shout out in Facebook uh first week of May, and. I didn't know that there was a March, front line. March, ah, March pala. Sorry, 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 guys. Sorry. March yon, yes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uy, sorry. So, I did a shout-out on Facebook noong March. I think first week of March. And then Carla saw my shout-out. Because um, I'm, in a way, I have a small food business. So, actually, that time when I did a shout-out, my staff also decided to ECQ at home. So I had no operations anymore in my in my food business. But I still wanted to feed the frontliners somehow. And I didn't know the frontline feeder, feeders Philippines was already uh, alive. And then Carla messaged me. She goes, Kuyen, you want to volunteer? So I go, sure. Pero I don't have, ano, I said, I don't have manpower. And then she goes, no, you can volunteer. Gan, gan, gan. So she, she put me in. But basically, my the background of where I'm coming from is because this March, I was turning 40. And I really had a plan of having like a month-long, um, you know, giving activity for myself until the end of March. But then since ECQ happened, sabi ko, this is the best way to give back. Not only monetary or, you know, through my food, but my time as well. So basically, I got myself committed to this thing and then everything just sort of happened. Like, uh, Carla just, Carla and me started to talk to me. They started to walk me through. They assigned me Medical City and Philippine Heart Center. And then all of a sudden, I had other doctor friends who started to reach out to me, like one from Marikina Valley and then the other, the one, the, the most latest is um, MCU Hospital in Kalookan. See, so the geography of my hospitals have grown. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so that's my, that's how I got into it. It was just really the willingness to do something at a time where I think it was a milestone for me. But at the same time, when you think about it, it's a milestone for everybody because when would when did we have a pandemic? Like long time ago, diba? So parang feeling ko medyo nega, but at the same time you think of something positive about it. So yun. It's a milestone that's a pandemic, but this is where we are today. So this is where I am today. I'm volunteering for frontline feeders. So that's basically it. Yeah. All right. Um so who wants to go next? Anton. <laughs> Word of caution, because we can really talk a lot. Bigyan mo na kami ng time limit. Oh, oh, uh, a few seconds. <laughs> Carla, I guess. Carla, since you Um. Yeah, well, my family is in the food business. Uh, we have a catering company. So, um, Ross actually brought me in to help make meals for frontliners. And um, I... I was scheduled in for March 16. Um, but uh, yeah, that day lang. Um, I we did 400 meals for Mahati Med and 50 for Philippine Heart Center. And then um, at the end of the day, like my staff just all said that they all wanted to go home to their families. So, parang from 
parang hindi na ako na schedule ulit kasi it looked like we had to shut down operations in our commissary and that meant closing also all of our other branches and the restaurant and stuff like that. So, yun. <laughs> all right. So that's how I got involved instead of like um being like on the kitchen part as someone who would produce the the meals, parang I stayed on to help coordinate na lang the operations. Um which is actually harder. I mean, there's more work rather than, I mean, cooking is like physical labor, diba? Pero, pero like the coordination, parang grabe. There's so much going on, especially during the first, first two weeks. Like, parang, like we didn't know what to expect. Um, every day, there was something that would happen. Parang, we were just taking it day by day kasi biglang, um, it, uh, ano ba yung mga challenges natin on the transportation thing? Logistics, yes. Yeah. Uh, checkpoint. Mm. Um, checkpoint. Yeah. Food available. It's, just, it's like always a, a, a challenge naman for us. Um, medyo the past few weeks lang nag-normalize um, because we've, we've been receiving uh, mga volunteers also and then, Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, maybe let's go to Lucien. Lucien, maybe can you share your story? What motivated you? Uh, when before before I got involved with frontline feeders, we were approached actually by another group, a friend who asked if we wanted to help out for one hospital, Muna, which was Las Piñas General, because I'm from the south, so. We, me and my husband, we handled the South Hospitals. Um, so we said yes, na, okay, what can we do to help? Um, and then later on, uh, I approached Gang, kasi nga I gave donations before for the Taal victims. So I, I, I approached her again. I told her, I have some food here. How do I go about it if I wanted to donate? And then she, ano na, she asked me, Nana, do you want to be part of this group? Na, are you willing to to be um, handling the South Hospitals? Because I'm from the South. Na. So I said yes, na. And that's when it started. So it started from one hospital and then naging dalawa. And then lumagdag ng lumagdag. And now it's five. Five hospitals. Na. Okay. But I started, I, I joined them late, later on na. Mga siguro second week na na they're operating or they're giving food, that's when I started to join. Okay. Um, yeah. I think uh, let's go to Margot, the only guy from the... <laughs> you have two guys, diba? I guess part of the team. So let's go to Margot. Yes. <laughs> Margot. Hello. Uh, basically, I'm a friend of Ross. Parang we have a lot of group chats and then suddenly she messaged na they want to help. So, okay. <laughs> Uh, my, my background is in the agency side. So I have parang a small ad, ad agency. Tapos, uh, a lot of clients started to pause their operations. So parang kami rin in the agency, we wanted to help. Kaso lang, we don't know which uh, group to help. Tapos, we, we got in touch with Ross. Tapos we started doing it na. So, parang I came in around second or third week of the operations. Then, medyo, siguro the challenge for me was to really make a system for socials. Kasi, syempre, the group is scattered. Na iba-iba kami talaga ng locations na we never met. So, parang the, the goal for me was how to make a process in which mas magiging maayos yung flow of donations we do a better form para ma- ma-segregate namin properly yung donors, kitchens, uh, volunteers. So, yun yung naging challenge for me. Tapos, syempre, yun nga, medyo ako lang yung active na guy dun sa group. So, <laughs> on the story, when I first met them through a Zoom meeting, meron kasi kaming parang theme pa, themes when we do Zoom meetings. <laughs> Tapos, when we started doing it, the first meeting na I joined in, lahat sila nakabikini. <laughs> Tapos parang, ang, ang, 
who's ang um, message pa na parang who's this guy? Bakit? Ba't may lalaki? Tapos lahat sila nakabikini. And I'm like, huh? Ito yung okay naman. Parang, I'm getting along with them. And it's, it's fun. It's fun. The group is fun. So you're the IT behind the operation. Tama ba? Or social media? I'm a digital. The digital. The, I, we do the creatives at saka comms. Okay. Alright. Let's go to Steffi. Steffi, Steffi no? Hello. Hi, hi, Steffi. So, what, what's your story? Um, Koyan is my friend. Uh, she's the only one that I actually knew and know. Pero everybody else we talk every day, so parang family na ngayon. But Koyan posted that she needed meals for Makati Med, tama? She needed meals for Makati Med, and then I just messaged her, "Do you want meals? I'll send you meals. That's it." Like parang inisip ko, I'll send meals once and I'm done. <laughs> And then, <laughs> no, that's not what happened. <laughs> and then Koyan was like, sige, sige, you can send meals. But she added me to a group chat. I'm the kind of person that if I'm in a group chat, I really reply. I'm a replier. Like, hindi ko kaya yung mag- magbasa tas hindi mag-reply. So, like, I'm really a replier. Tas bilang, and it's hard for me to say no. <laughs> and so when Koyan, when they were like, we need a coordinator for East Ha. Ah, we need a coordinator for PGH. Steffi, ikaw na, ikaw na. Tapos ako parang, ano yung coordinator? Like, well, I didn't even know what it was. But then I was just like, okay, sige. And then suddenly, I was like a coordinator for these big hospitals. Like, for me, Philippine General Hospital, that's like, they, they call it the darling of donors. Kasi everybody wants to donate to PGH. So like, I was a bit lucky kasi parang ang dali naman ng job ko as coordinator, PGH yung nasa akin. Lahat ng donors to Steffi, to Steffi, to Steffi. So parang, yes, ang dali ng pag-fill ng breakfast, lunch, dinner, all this stuff. Pero with big hospitals like that also comes <laughs> some um, problems. So meron din mga problems with big hospitals and stuff like that. So that's how... <laughs> so yun, that's how... <laughs> that's how... Um, I joined. Parang, hindi ko talaga minimin. But I guess, it's meant to be just like everything that's happening to all of us. Parang meant to be for all of us to meet and become a team and now become family. Nice. Nice story. Okay, let's uh, <laughs> go to May. May? There. May. Hi there. Um... I got a message from Ross, uh, I think on March 15 or 16. Um, around that time, I had already uh, brought um, a meal to Koyan's house. I met her for the first time because my high school uh, batchmate is a doctor in the medical city. And uh, I told her, you know, I, uh, I have my, my former boss gave me money to buy meals and uh, another batchmate gave me a lot of cookies. Can I send it to you? She goes, you give it to our coordinator. And then she said that their coordinator is Koyen. And uh, she lived right across from, well, not right across. So I brought the food there. And then afterwards, um, I started uh, talking to Ross, who brought me into a group chat. And yeah, as they say, the rest is history. My background would be, aside from being the friend of Ross, Knox, um, iba, 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 training, I also write. Um, and now, since, there's, uh, since the ECQ started, wala namang training na mangyayari. Uh, so everything has been uh, at a standstill. But yung standstill ng trabaho, na fulfill siya ng flurry of activities na nangyayari with frontline feeders because everybody in this chat will tell you we start really, really early and we end really, really late. Um, technique na lang namin yun para in between we can do a bit of work. Or we just don't end. It's just forever. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Continuous. <work>. It's true. <laughs> patalog, ka, patalog ka na lang. Bigla na lang may chat na oh, hindi yan. Parang Ay, okay, yeah. guys, tomorrow na. Or, yeah. Yeah. No, or yeah. like, means yeah. diba, when you wake up in the middle of the night and then you check your phone, you have to reply. Uh, you have to reply. Kasi <laughs> like, kakaya naman. Kakaya naman. Everyone else is volunteering. Tapos parang, so you reply kahit gitna ng gabi. But we also have Chica Mini. <laughs> yeah. 
We have a lot of chica minute. A lot of chica minute, yes. Are we complete na? Hindi pa, si Jen pa. Jen, si Jen pa. Yeah, meron pa guys. Relax. Hi. Hello everyone. So, um, I'm a documentary producer. I'm a journalist. And um, I'm thankful because work didn't really stop for me. Um, as a matter of fact, we've actually been continuously working on some archival pieces for publicity. But what got me here, aside, um, aside from the intent to help, was basically curiosity. Um, curiosity to... Parang to be able to ask, like, I mean, I thought that I would be preoccupied with work, but it didn't, it's just so hard to set aside the issues when you're actually talking, working on them. Parang the debts, the lack of funding, yung mga ganon. So it got me thinking, I was very, very curious to look at how I could actually help. So, si Rose, I saw her post and I'm like, one-liner lang yata yung sinend ko na parang, Hoy, sali ako dyan. <laughs> parang ganon. <laughs> Okay, and uh, that's everyone, no? Okay, so um, thank thank you for explaining your story. Ang galing, no? Parang uh, you just got together. And um, maybe can you just uh, share a story um, on, you know, th- this COVID is really a war. This is a war of our generation. And siguro mga 5, 10 years from now, we'll go back to this day and share war stories uh, maybe can you share your memorable uh, war stories that uh, you know touched you during this frontline feeders uh, philippines um, project or operations i have one story okay um i think this was on our second week um See, si Margot kasi created the form so that when people go on our uh, Facebook page, all they have to do is click and check how we want to, to help. So we checked that form every day and I got in touch with the lady who said that she wanted to donate meals, 50 meals, uh, whichever hospital. So I talked to her and in the course of our conversation, she mentioned that her son... Uh, who, of course, wasn't busy with school, wanted to, to help her out because uh, he was going to turn uh, 11, I think, in March, but then the lockdown was announced. He was going to go to an orphanage to, to spend his birthday with the kids, but because that wasn't going to happen anymore. Um, I made her, uh, I told her about some of the kids in a friend's village who started writing notes and then they would make it into a collage. And she was so excited by the idea, she told her son. So this little boy, apart from helping the mom prepare the food, um, I spoke to her, I think, on a Sunday or on a Monday because all the days are just one long day. So let's say I spoke to her on a Sunday. Her son started writing notes because he wanted to make sure but that by Thursday, he would have 10, uh, he would have 50 notes already. So he was writing like 10 notes a day. Um, when they were packing it, um, they sent it out, and then the doctors in the hospital, sometimes we get photographs, sent back a photograph with the food and then with a note from the child. When the child saw it, he got confused. He told the mom, you know, I didn't put any of their names, but how come one doctor would have a note from me? And it, it looked like they really read it. And he, he was confused because he didn't write any of the names. So the mom explained, you know, even if you don't write their names, as long as they get it, they will they will feel that it's really theirs. So parang the little boy kind of had uh, an unusual experience, which was far greater than what he wanted to have, uh, you know, safety-wise. Um, when we posted that story, there were people who started writing us, I mean, posting on the way that they can donate, to offer notes. But um, it's just heartwarming because this boy is 11 years old. And for me, he showed us that you didn't have to have a very specific person to, to, to encourage. People, when they receive encouragement, whether kilala pa nila kung kanino nang galing, kung sino pinanggalingan, they, they accept it because during this time, every bit of kindness, every act of um, that comes from a good heart and good intention really counts. Nice. Any, anybody wants to share a story? Galing, ah. Galing, ah. 
Yeah, his name is Andres. He's eleven. He just turned eleven. Um, for me, naman, I think it's so heartwarming how creative the donations have become. Um, syempre, the most visible will be the core team and the frontline feeders page because we really post a lot about what we're doing. Um, and uh, one big reason why we really went full on into social media, aside from the fact that both Margot and I are really <laughs> digital advertising guys also, yes. is that we know how the how spreading awareness about the advocacy will really also bring in more help and support. Um, something we've learned from the over 10 years that we've been doing work like this is that a lot of people want to help, but one, they don't know how, and two, um, they're nervous yung mga tao mag-donate if they don't know the organization. So they want organizations that are referred by other friends or organizations they know people. Parang they know some of the organizers personally. And um, they want to see that what they're donating actually gets to its recipients. So that's why we went full on social media mode on our personal pages and on the Frontline Feeders page to really show everyone what's happening. And the beautiful thing about it is that donations have come in so many different forms. And you know, there are also a whole host of people who are helping us get donations in their own way. Um, um, there's this guy, John, we're in a separate group chat with Gang. And apparently he's been working with Gang ever since Aboy Days and all that. You know, it's a super quiet chat group. He'll just pop in every so often. Do you guys need eggs? Yeah, sure. And later, okay, I'm delivering 60 trays. Do you guys need oil? Yeah. Okay. Can you have 10 cases of oil picked up at this location? So there are people who are also in their homes but are now going through their contact list siguro and one by one asking, oh, baka you can help. And no help is too small. Because eh. mm. I mean, 10 boxes of oil with oil pouches, sobrang laking bagay nun for kitchens. And it's not even just the monetary value. It's just, it's so hard to buy stuff, right? Even if you have the money, it's hard to buy all It's so flags. hard. So, things like that. Or, um, I have a friend who works with uh, Century Pacific. And she said, Ross, we're slowly starting our operations. How can we help? And I said, well, you know, we'll take donations in kind. That's all I said. So, she spoke to the team, and I think they got directives from the company president and everything. And they decided on what they're capable of donating. Then they said, okay, we can donate bread, hot dog buns. Um, we can donate, um, uh, and we can produce this much in a day. We can produce up to 10,000 per day with our current operations. I said, okay. Yung talagang she'll just check in on me, parang okay ba this donation? And then siya nang bahala. Then she's, I'm like, how do we deliver? Because if you really need us to deliver, I can find a way. Kaya lang it's easier if you guys can help us deliver. She said, okay, I'll fix it. I think we can deliver. So ko, okay, um, so can I just give you our database? You know, super easy. I gave her the whole database. She had her team call everyone. They coordinated the routes. They're doing 30 deliveries a day. And now they're at like over 60,000 breads with various fillings and like pizza, flat breads and all that. Delivered to all of the hospitals we work with. So we're consistently working with close to 50 hospitals. And then there are other 10 other hospitals we help when we're able. So kahit yung hospitals na yun, napadala nila lahat. And we'll just find out they're delivering when we get a call or Picture when we get photos na from the hospital showcasing that they got the breads. So there's, I mean, there's about 20 of us in the core group, but there's a much bigger organization that's somehow working without us even knowing it at times and biglang boom, babagsak na lang yung blessings. Galing, no? Galing. Was, I'm still amazed at how you guys are really able to do it. Uh, anybody who wants to share a uh, story? <laughs> I, can, I can interject one more time. Um, one of the biggest donors we have is the Shell Foundation. Oh, what? Yeah. What 
Um, so oh, wow. they're actually hitting two birds with one stone. They have been transporting vegetables from farms in Benguet. Uh, Batangas ba yung iba? Batangas. Uh, Batangas. Benguet and Batangas. Mm-hmm. And they've been picking up tons of vegetables and then dropping it off at um, Chef Waya's Chef Waya's. Our street. Where, where may system na nung una para, oh my God, it's 1.7 tons of vegetables and gagawin natin. <laughs> And then the next was, it's four tons of vegetables, pero alam na namin yung gagawin. So we have everything brought down at Chef Wayas, and then the kitchens are, are, are alerted when it's there. We all come in and pick up our goods, and my system is coming warehouse in the north. Um, and then we pick up the vegetables, then we distribute it to our kitchens. And it's so much vegetables that we're not only able to feed our hospitals, we're also able to share it with community kitchens and other organizations that work with underserved communities. And I mean, it's funny because the point person of the Shell Foundation is a girl named Chell. So we now call it the Chell Foundation. <laughs> um, but they've done three, four deliveries. And other organizations have followed suit, so we're waiting for East West Seedling to send us more vegetables. Um, but yeah, I mean, something like that, it doesn't have to be cash. And it also doesn't have to be tons of vegetables, but that's super appreciated. Okay. So, Ako, I have something to share. Yes, yes. Um, talking about Shell and huge donations. I think it was the second or third week that I was working for Frontline Feeders. And merong nag-text sa akin kasi diba, since it's my name on under a bunch of hospitals as coordinator. So, we have a poster and then donors text like, hey, I want to donate here, ganyan. So, syempre, sanay tayo to receive donations like 1,000, 5,000, 10,000. So, I was talking with this guy on Viber. Tapos, nagsusorry siya. Sorry, sorry. Like, this is like all I can give, ganon. And by the way, naiiyak ako kasi like mga five hours ako umiiyak that day after this conversation. <laughs> He sent me a screenshot of 200 pesos na donation. And then he was like, I'm so sorry. Like, this is all I can give. Pero naisip ko parang, oh, naiyak ako. Naisip ko, um, like, you, if you guys know the widow's might, like, when people that don't have a lot of money still, oh, naiyak ako nakakainis when people don't have a lot of money and um, <laughs> they still want to give and they still want to donate. Yeah, parang, yeah, Shell has see it parang meron silang big corporation, they have a lot of yeah. money to give. Pero when regular people are able to give, yeah, it's, it's a good thing. Every, it's okay. Get used to it because all of us cry like every day. Iyak na kami all the time. Yeah. But yeah, yung mga ganun na stories, parang everybody wants to help. Like the yeah. goodness and kindness. So, yeah. All right. Uh, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's a good story, and uh, which leads me to uh, my uh, concluding question. So, what's next? Maybe, um, you know, the quarantine was extended until May 15. Uh, I'm sure you're getting uh, donor fatigue also, um, and I'm sure people are getting into this normal at home lang. No, they <laughs> they got used to at home. Um, any advice or what help you need or how can people continue to support the fight um, of the COVID-19 with the frontliners? Because there's sometimes people think na okay na, no? a lot of people are supporting, but uh, maybe can you give us advice or tip for people who wants to continue to help uh, until this quarantine is lifted? Mm. Yeah. Uh, Sige, May, you? Yeah, I suppose... Um, oh, you see me. Mm. Um, we have all experienced it. People want to help. And um, for those of you who still haven't um, figured out how, just give. Give what you can. Uh, because there's no small... There's no amount too small. Or, of course, no amount too big. Uh, no donation too small, no donation too big, whether it's money, 
its goods, its services. Um, it would be great to look back to this time and realize that you had made a difference. Kung ano man yung binigay mo, just to look back to this time and say, yeah, you know, I gave this much during the time. I, I, I offered my services. Just give. Give what you can. Because don't look back to this time and say, oh, shucks, you regret not being able to help. Because uh, the opportunity is... Okay. Uh, any comment you wanted to say? Yeah. I just wanted to add to what May said because... Um, a lot of, there's also this stigma kasi when people look at our hospital listing and then they see, syempre, we also have private hospitals on the list. And there are donors that I spoke to that said na, no, I don't want to donate there. Let's donate in a smaller hospital or something. Um, I just wanted to let people know because what's nice about being a coordinator, in all honesty, it's like you get the best of both worlds. So you listen to the people inside the hospital, like your hospital contacts, you know, you ask them what's happening to them. And it it has become, for me personally, it has become an eye-opener also because these frontliners really, I mean, doctors, nurses, even their janitors, their security guards, everybody in the hospital setting right now they're basically really are are the ones that are fighting helping us fight this so i had to explain to a couple of donors na you know in all honesty it doesn't matter if it's a private hospital or a public hospital all these hospitals need help because right now not parang just like everyone else who's going through a a big pause in terms of earning money The private hospital started to open their doors to COVID patients talaga. I mean, not all of them will say it in the news or whatever, but you know, it's 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 basically something na meron silang pasyente and kunwari COVID nga, pero hindi naman nila ito turn down kasi for them, they have to help talaga. That's really their line of duty. So what they're doing now is the commitment of all of them and And there are hospitals na, you know, hindi na nga umuwi talaga yung mga frontliners nila eh. They stay already in the hospital. So, there are times when some of our hospital contacts will say, sorry ah, pero we have to up our food kasi um, meron kami mga workers na, let's say, na naka, ano, naka, what do you call this? Naka-confine in terms of um, the 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 two week ano what do you call that quarantine. the isolation period yeah, yeah. the quarantine period so sure they can't not think of those employees they also have to feed those employees so parang on a on on the other side of the story just to add to what a lot of them are saying no of helping you can really it's really ano eh parang ako personally there are times na iyak ako kasi sabi ko, oh my gosh, they are sacrificing so much. They can't see their families. Alam mo yun? And then some of them, they get sick. Ang bata-bata pa nila. Parang they have to fight talaga for their life. So I guess to those people who want to help, um, I hope you can take out the stigma na we have to reach the small hospitals. Yes, I agree. But right now in this fight, pantay-pantay eh. Alam mo yun? Private hospital, public hospital, they all need help talaga. So, I just hope, alam mo yun, kung makatulong, tulong tayo sa ano, hindi lang sa pipiliin mong feeling mo na hindi sila na dadat na or whatever. Help everybody sana talaga. I mean, that's a that's such a big wish, but at the same time, it's such a realization rin. Kasi, yun nga, there's that certain stigma na, ah, may pera naman yung hospital na yan. I don't wanna give there. No, really, everyone's fighting this fight. As in, everybody so yeah if just like what may said if you give whatever that you can it's super thing you know we'll we'll welcome it with open arms super so that's basically it um i'd like to add some um uh 
points that I think that can, you know, help the discussion further. Um, I think that we all agree that um, there are so many emotions at the moment right now. There's anger, there's feeling of fear, uncertainty, and it's so hard for some people to even include charity or volunteerism work because of these feelings, no? I think um, I go back to curiosity. Parang just take some time off to look at the issue or look what's happening, look at what's happening. And I think it will start from that. Eh. When you began to ask questions like, ano na bang nangyayari? Ilan na ba yung namatay? And then I think it will come naturally that you will try to look at how you can extend help. Like, I mean, I don't want to use the words purpose and passion when it comes to charity work because it's gonna be, um, it's, it's gonna create a, what you call an empathetic meltdown when you just feel pressured to help save the world, blah, blah, blah. I think when you're curious, you ask a question, be it like, I'm a journalist, how can I help? Oh, maybe I can stop the spread of fake news. And actually, that's what you can bring to the table. It doesn't have to be money, it doesn't have to be food, but, you know, parang just be curious and ask questions. And I think that's a good start already. Okay. Actually, um, what, what I want to say lang, sorry, is um, everyone can help. And the, the, the least you can do is share how to help. Just click that share button. That's the least you can do. Um, you don't have to provide money. Everyone's having a hard time. It doesn't have to be money. You don't have to provide goods. You don't have to try and join 10 bajillion chat groups. But at the very least, tell your network about ways they can help. It doesn't even have to be about frontline feeders. Um, each person will have their own advocacy that they'll feel um, drawn to some a lot of people are drawn to the frontliners now but there are also groups that serve that give underserved communities the community kitchens the um, really impoverished and remote areas that are not getting any help there are organizations that are trying to reach them too there are so many ways to help um, so it's really as simple as clicking the share button and if you feel like you want to donate um, you know, we've gotten donations as well as 10 pesos. Baka lalong mas maiyak si Steph. <laughs> the donation is too small because what my grandfather used to say, kung kulang ng piso, hindi mo mabubuo yung isang daan. So that 10 pesos could have really filled up that one meal. And that is such a big thing. All right. Um... Thank you for that. Um, so as we close this, um, you know, this this talk, um, what I'm really doing is trying to do a time capsule video of what's happening in the moment. So what I wanted to ask you is any final thoughts uh, about happening with COVID-19, with concern uh, of people, and any messages of hope lang, uh, to all the listeners? Anyone? <laughs> uh, stay home guys and stay home. <laughs> no really stay home can like I mean it can save your life and your family and um, parang you also have to be by example kasi. so parang if, if you keep going out and other people see na ah, parang silang pala lumabas eh De, yeah Lalabas, so uh, stay home na lang. Um, especially like if you're comfortable naman, you have everything you need at home, like oh, there's no way you can go out unless it's a grocery run na, you know, like a 30 minute joke lang. does a grocery. I don't even know. <laughs> I haven't been out of the house since like the 16th. So oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Malapit I don't even know. I'm not <laughs> Any other final thoughts? Um, okay, can I say something again? <laughs> Go, Jen. Um, I think um, two years ago, I started to feel less proud about being a Filipino because of the many issues, you know, that we need an entire month to discuss about. But... Um, I think I will remember COVID-19 
um, about how proud I am to be a resilient Filipino. Many times our resiliency is being applauded elsewhere, but really, um, I think it's the only we were the only countries that the country that can actually laugh at the whole thing. Parang there, there's humor and there's compassion and there's resilience. So I will really remember this pandemic as um, parang it rekindled the fire that hey, I'm still proud to be a Filipino. Parang ganon. Yun lang. Um, I'm just gonna reiterate what I said earlier. Um, Carla said, "Stay home." Me, parang stay woke. Yeah. Not just stay home. <laughs> that you can woke. make a difference. Stay home. Stay yeah. woke. Uh, you can make a difference. Um, no okay. amount, no effort is too small. Um, uh, and tayo tayo Hi. lang talaga mag-aalaga sa isa't isa. We have to, we have to admit that to ourselves to terms with that. Ah. Let's just be there for each other. Right. Okay. All right. We have, we have to agree right. din kasi parang parang COVID is a, a time-sensitive war na it really helps na we don't bring each other down. Tapos yes. today, parang we're all allies in this battle. And we have to remember that our enemy is not really the people, but the virus. Yeah. So we have to do this together. Because talagang the, the noise in social media is really bad. So we so have to have a clear mind. Now again, it's a battle with COVID. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Lucien or Steph, any thoughts? I just want to say thank you to all the donors, everybody that I know, and all the companies that have donated to us. Maraming salamat, and sana wag kayong mapagod na magpadala pa ng pera, ng good, <laughs> anong man. Yes! We're here to accept anything that you have to give. Okay. Uh, thank you. Lucien? Um, just the same with everybody else's messages na any help every bit of help counts there's no there's no such thing as a small donation big donation and just the simple uh, act of sh- spreading the news of what we're doing is already a big help because it widens the network it taps i don't know with we, we, we tap other companies or other individuals who might want to help so, so just the fact that um, you can spread the word about what we're doing is already a big help for us. Not necessarily dapat cash donation or ma pressure kayo na to prepare 50 meals. Um, yeah, spread the word para more people are, I guess, become aware of what we're doing. All right. Uh, thank you. And maybe the final word from Ross, final thoughts from Ross. Um, I think if there's anything this pandemic will teach us is one is to really be kind. Um, the physical social distancing is taking a toll on so many people. But every time someone sends me a message out of nowhere na mga ngamusta lang, parang pala ng feeling na ganun, no? So, um, just constantly try to reach out. And to always remember, for the first time, I think, Every single person all over the world is going through the same difficulties. Right. So just be kind. Reach out. Check on your friends, especially those who are living alone. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you so much. It's been an honor talking to you, ladies. Can we maybe have a class photo? Or- <laughs> <laughs> ladies plus Margot. Plus Margot. Ladies plus Margot. <laughs> So, okay, one, two. All right, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Anton and Ray. Thank, thank, thank you. you. You're awesome, Planet. Thank nice thank to see you, you guys too. again. Bye. Thank you, guys. <laughs> bye bye. 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 Bye.